Hello and welcome back to Polytoots. In this tutorial, we're going to be hopping into 3D Coat and we're going to be seeing how you can create your own low poly debris pile. We're going to be using just sort of stones and rocks in this example, but uh, you can, if you want, extrapolate this out to any kind of trash or bricks, pipes, tires, uh, whatever you want really. There's, there's no real limit, but essentially the end goal is you kind of just end up with this one single mesh. Um, which you can just use to place around your levels in games. But essentially these are the kind of meshes that you would find in almost all games uh, that have any sort of open world or not even open world. It just, it really helps break up the uh, sort of the flat tiling t t textures of the world. And of course nowadays you've got parallax and whatnot, but um, nothing beats a good sort of debris mesh. It's a real nice piece and it's usually a lot lower poly than if you were to just go ahead and place down all of these rocks individually. Um, so yeah, we're going to be making this. So if that interests you, stick around because we're starting it in like five seconds. All right, so let's get started with this. Uh, we're just going to be using voxel sculpting. There's no need to go into surface mode for any of this really, unless you wanted to at the end. Uh, for this specific example, there's no need to go into surface, but uh, so I'm going to call my first layer floor. And I imagine you can hear the typing of my keyboard pretty clearly. Uh, I've had to put my microphone right behind the keyboard, unfortunately, but uh, it is what it is. So I'm going to start with just a primitive because essentially all, all we want to do here is lay down just a bit of a foundation to scatter meshes across. Um, didn't want to move that. Um, you don't need it to be thick, really, but uh, it doesn't matter. So something like this and now we're just going to sort of deform it a bit and with the move tool uh, when you move it kind of it works based off of uh, view direction or screen space so if I were to push that up there you can see it's actually moving out uh, if you didn't want to do that if you did just want to affect the uh, the local normals as it were you just hold control and then you can do that and it will just push it up based on the uh, the normals of the mesh. So this one was coming out at a slight angle because we started it on a curve. So something to bear in mind. Um, I'm going to undo that. So I'm just going to move this around a bit. Uh, it is again just like the, uh, the base shape that you're going to be putting your meshes all over. So you really don't have to do a whole lot of work here. Just, uh, you know, if you want to have some peaks and dips, this is this is kind of the place where you would do that. Um, and ultimately it kind of defines the, uh, the way that the model would sit in your world anyway. So if you wanted it to, uh, to have a bit of an angle to it, then this is basically where you would do that. If you want it to be straight, then again, this is where you would do that. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that at that for now. Again, it really doesn't have to be perfect. And so we'll move on to the, um, the actual splattering suppose of the models and you should have a, a models window uh, if you don't it'll be somewhere up in uh, the windows pop-ups and I already have some stuff made in my custom folder and you can make a folder just by hitting this little folder icon um, and if you don't know how to make your own models um, I recommend looking at my 3d code overview uh, where we, we discussed that a bit um, it is just as easy though is um, whatever you have in a layer, uh, you can just move this layer into here. It will ask you to do a reduction. Um, you can specify like not to reduce any or to reduce some, which um, oftentimes if you're using this to sort of scatter them around the places, then you do want to reduce it a bit. Otherwise you're just gonna kill your machine. But I'll just cancel that because, uh, oh, for some reason it still did it. Strange. So either way, there's the mesh there and I will just uh, get rid of this because we don't need it. So I have made some very, very simple uh, stone shapes. Um, obviously these can be anything. Like if you're, if, if you're doing this, like to lay down a bunch of debris or something, you can have all sorts of pipes and tires and boxes and just trash or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, for this example, we're just going to stick with rocks. Um, and I will also noting you don't have to do this because voxels are amazing but for now to keep things a bit simple i am going to split this into 
different layers. So I'll say rock color one and with the model selected, it will bring up the tool import window and we want to use the on brush and I, I can see here that these are already set to 180 for my uh, essentially the randomization. If yours is at zero, then you'll get something like this. So you can scale with your brush radius and also control the depth, which moves basically the model uh, closer or further away from the point that you're trying to intersect it with. So I'm going to increase this again, the, uh, the yours and the pictures and the rolls. Um, I'm not going to take too much care of this. I mean, I don't really want the rock to be pointing straight up, but uh, for the sake of this example, I'm sure it's fine. And plus they're rocks, you know, you can do all sorts of randomizations with rocks. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay down a couple of things. Uh, just like this. I might need to increase, in fact, uh, almost certainly, I think I'll need to increase my resolution a bit. So I'm going to resample this layer up. Maybe we want a little bit more. I'm just going to clear what we've done because it got all mushed up. So let's try this again. Okay, no, that's fine. If you wanted to increase the spacing, like so when you draw out, if you don't want all of these sort of intersecting with each other too much, you can come up here to your brush options and use spacing. And I'm not sure what amount will work best. Seems to be okay, to be fair, because I do want to scatter these pretty much all over the place. Um, I'm not too fussed about spacing on this particular stage. I'm essentially using this as my new uh, foundation, I suppose. This is, this is kind of replacing the floor. So if you, uh, if you know about the sort of the, uh, the theory of having areas of rest, and you're wondering why I'm just scattering all of these all over the place. Uh, it's because this this essentially will be the rest area. And then we'll drop in some other rocks and some larger rocks on top. So it might seem like I'm just making a noisy mess, but uh, it'll come out all right. Uh, so something like this. It's not pretty to look at just yet, but uh, we'll start dropping down some, some more models. Um, I might as well make a new layer for this as well. Get some different rocks. Get something like that. Uh, oh, again, I might need to increase my resolution a bit. Uh, something like that. Now, if you wanted, you could just start single clicking uh, rather than doing, you know, strokes of rocks all over the place. Uh, for now, I am just going to continue kind of laying down a couple of strokes here and there. Not there. And the main thing that I'm looking out for here, uh, obviously it's sort of uh, an interesting array of meshes, uh, but also I don't want to create too many problems for myself later down the line. So if I can try and do some, oh, I mean, that's okay. So something like this, if you just have like this bit of mesh sticking out here, uh, when it comes to doing your retopology, even if you're doing a, an auto retopology, um, you're going to have triangles basically sticking out of the side. Um, whereas you kind of around the edges, at least you kind of want to keep things pretty uh, neat and uniform. And as you sort of move in from the edges, that's when you can kind of do some crazy stuff. Um, this is just sort of based on experience really because the smoother your edge points are the easier it is to kind of intersect with other meshes uh, within your sort of world uh, without things obviously clipping through one another. Uh, so I'm going to stop it there for now and you might have noticed that I did just place that on the rock pile too but Eh, it doesn't really matter. Um, we need to merge these down anyway. Um, if you want to do an auto retopology, if you're doing a manual one, then you don't have to worry. But uh, for the sake of time, we are going to be doing an auto retopology. And uh, to be honest, with the instant 
meshes integration that 3D Co has. Uh, for doing this s sort of stuff, it's, uh, it's really quite fine. Um, obviously, if you were to do manual retopology, uh, you're going to get sort of more efficient results with your triangle usage. Um, but at the same time, instant meshes is kind of a miracle. And I use it a fair bit uh, for anything that I basically don't have to animate or something like this would be a pretty good example. Um, obviously, if you're making something like a barrel or a book or something like that, you don't need to do an auto retopo for that because, you know, it's simple enough. You might as well just do it manually. So I'm just going to merge these layers into one. And the way that I'm going to do that is just by holding the shift key and moving these layers on top of each other like this. And so now this is all one mesh, uh, which is another great example of voxels being amazing. And I will just, I'll resample it a little bit more, give myself a tiny bit more geometry. And also while we're here, um, I know I said we weren't going to go into surface mode, but I do keep lying. So we are going to go into surface mode and we're going to take advantage of a noise brush. Well, not a brush per se, more of a tool. Um, it's pretty weird settings. Must have been using it before. So from here, um, you can kind of just add noise to your object and I'm not yet convinced that I'm going to keep any of this. I just wanted to have a look to see if, uh, if I can get sort of a cheap little bit of detail. So let's try. Nah, to be fair, that's okay. It's just a, uh, it's just an extra little bit of detail. So we're just going to go ahead and auto retopo this. And instant meshes is pretty amazing for this. You don't need to use manual for this kind of thing. I'm not really not fussed about the uh, sort of edge topology, the edge flow of this mesh. So the auto automatic one is fine. You do probably want to put in a relatively high number here um, to begin with. Anyway, uh, I recommend sort of a high-ish number here and then reducing it either in 3D coat as well, or if you use Max Maya Blender or whatever. So I'm actually going to go up to about 2000 and then we'll see what that looks like. We might need to go higher. Okay. Uh, yeah, it looks okay, to be honest. There's going to be some tidy up involved almost certainly. Um, so we are at 3,600 triangles, which is a fair old amount. Um, but we don't need quite a lot of this. So I'm just going to select essentially I'm going to just expand it. So it goes up a little too far like this and then I'll just deselect. So I'll speed up the video because you don't need to watch me deselect a whole bunch of faces. Okay, something like that should be fine. And I have noticed there is a bit of a, a hole in our mesh here, but we'll fix that up in a bit. So I'm just going to remove those faces. And oh, it looks like there's a couple of holes, which is fine. Sort of to be expected. So I'll swap to my points and faces tool and I'll fill that one in. And looks like there's a something really weird going on here. You might find this happens to you as well. It's uh, it's a case of um, on the sculpt. Right, you can see it on the sculpt. You'll have a mesh kind of inside a bit so we have this sort of area here and there is geometry in here that goes down into this sort of crevice so as far as auto retopology is concerned that's an area that you want to put ge geometry in um, whereas uh, we probably didn't want that to happen um, 
So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it out. Should be fine. And then we'll just put some faces back in. If you find with the points and faces tool that it's not connecting quite right to, uh, to what you think it should be doing, um, it might be a case of just having to re-enable the sculpt mesh so it has a, a sort of a point to raycast on. Uh, and as usual with these things, um, you're going to end up with a lot of faces that you should s sort out the triangulation yourself. Um, I'm pretty sure I covered this in my overview video, um, but essentially using the add and split tool, which is inbuilt with the uh, points and faces by holding control and shift. Uh, I'm just going to basically go around my mesh and force the triangulation to be uh, a specific way. So for example, here, uh, if we were to just export this out, 3D code might decide to just put the, the triangulation like this which uh, we don't really want. It makes much more sense to do it like that. So we get uh, a curve rather than a straight cutoff. So I'm going to go and fix up the, another whole area. I'm pretty sure there was two of them. And I'm going to define the triangulation of a few places. So again, I'm just going to speed through this because it's not something you need to see. Okay, so that'll probably do for that. Uh, we're at two and a half thousand triangles now, which I think is a reduction of over a thousand, if I remember correctly. Uh, there's still definitely a few areas that I could sort of fix up here, um, but I am just going to move straight onto the UVs and uh, do the mark seams. And depending on what it is you're doing and like the levels of uh, peaks and whatnot coming out, you might be able to get away with no seams at all. Uh, I think it's not going to work too well for this. So I might probably have to add in maybe a quarter split or something like that, uh, just to kind of help it because we have a lot of these shapes that sort of come out and I'm trying to flatten this whole thing as you can see over on the right there, the UV preview, getting a whole lot of stretching or, or rather squishing, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use the UV path tool, which should uh, make this a bit easier. So I'll just come along at a midpoint, I suppose, and I'll just keep running through the middle. And I'll let 3D code kind of work out the uh, best way to cut through this mesh. Handy little tool. And then I just hit return. And then I'll hit escape so I can start doing a new line and I'll just do the same on this side. Uh, okay, so it's still going to be pretty nasty, but um, I'll do an unwrap and we'll see how that looks. So yeah, I mean, it's okay. Not the best, not the worst. Let's see if we can get a, a bit more UV space out of it. Nah, yeah, that's okay. So now we're just going to bake this all out. And we do that by bake, and bake with normal map per pixel. And let's sort out our shells. So, in the shell, the idea here is make sure you don't see any mesh clipping through. Uh, and if you do, then you can just brush them away which is a really, really nice feature. Essentially, wherever you have mesh that you can see kind of sticking through the model, uh, it means you're probably going to end up with a bit of an issue, uh, which 
can oftentimes just be fixed on the texture itself, so I don't tend to spend a whole lot of time on these shells. If it if it's mostly right, then it's quicker to fix in the texture. So provided it's mostly right, then you should be okay. All right, so now let's send it off to the paint room. Um, I always turn the local occlusion off just because the uh, baking the actual ambient occlusion once you're in the room is so much better than this step. So uh, I always have it off. Um, we'll go with we'll go with one K. Okay, so now that has already gone into the paint room, which can often be a bit confusing because it doesn't take you into the paint room. So I'm just going to hide my sculpt stuff in this layer. And from the paint room, I'm looking at this, and this is the low poly. So looks a bit weird, but at the same time, kind of okay. I mean, bearing in mind we haven't started the texturing yet. Um, so let's, first of all, let's just knock out a occlusion map. We'll calculate occlusion, put it into a new layer. Okay, pretty dark, but uh, we'll fix that in a bit. And then let's also put down a curvature map. And if you've seen my uh, overview of 3D code with the, uh, the cupcake stuff, uh, I talk about the curvature map being a, a nice little cheat for certain t textures um, and we'll see how this looks like but for rocks it's often it's often pretty nice so yeah it's pretty nice so i'm going to turn this into an overlay and i'm just going to bring my ambient occlusion down let's try by half to begin with and the curvature probably also want to bring that down a fair bit uh, so yeah Pretty good start. So we have our rock pile O2 layer because that was created from the uh, the bake itself. And so I'm just gonna delete it because we don't need it. It uh, it, it will always come with its own uh, sort of gloss and metalness stuff. Whereas um, I kind of just want it to be starting off blank. So let's just lay down a couple of base colors. Uh, you might be thinking uh, that this is kind of a, a horrible way to work, given the fact that we're sort of just left with one layer. You, there's no way to mask out any of the rocks. So, um, you know, how do you how do you paint the floor s separately? Um, and that kind of all goes back to what I was saying about um, retopologizing. Uh, for 3D Co, at least, um, you can do retopologies uh, layer by layer, but for this type of mesh, uh, that's not usually ideal. Like if you're doing a sort of d debris pile or some sort of floor that is just sort of extra detailed, you don't really want to have meshes stacked on top of meshes. Um, so the only way to kind of do it is to just retopologize it yourself, because then uh, the amount of layers you're using in, in the sculpt room is redundant because you're doing the retopology and not a computer. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, that's about all there is to say on it, really. And this isn't really supposed to be any sort of in-depth texturing tutorial, so I'm just going to speed through this, but uh, I'm not going to be using any uh, advanced techniques. In fact, I think it's pretty much just the, uh, the brush. Um, if you wanted to, um, I mean, I, I recommend sort of hopping into the stencils area or making your own stencils as well. Um, let me just show you like a quick sort of example, not that one. Maybe not that one. Let's go with uh, cube mapping. Something like this.
and then maybe uh, something kind of sandy. Mm. Yeah, that's okay. It's really annoying how this, it always puts itself right in the middle. So just if you right click on it, you can just get it out of the way. So yeah, as I was saying, it's uh, not really a texturing tutorial. I will at some point be doing a tutorial on the smart materials. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to kind of speed through this. And the only thing I'm going to be using is just the brush. In fact, I'm not even going to be using any of the stencils. So I'll be back in a bit. All right, so I'm gonna leave that about there. Um, texturing is often a hard thing to teach, given that it's often one of those skills where the more time you put into it, the nicer something will look. So I've just kind of done a quick five minute paint. Um, more time would be a better result. But uh, So from here, I mean, you could just export this whole thing out. Uh, I do recommend sort of doing um, some kind of log system, uh, either through uh, a Unity plugin or if you use any other 3D software, just create lower poly assets of the same thing, drop it into Unity or whatever, and just uh, create some LODs. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. So thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something useful. But yeah, that's it for this tutorial. This is kind of how I would approach any kind of uh, detailed floor areas that, you know, rather than just tiling a texture, across the whole place, you kind of want, you know, some, some areas of interest, or if you're doing kind of uh, abandoned places where rubble has fallen down, this is, um, it's, it's a real nice way to do that. And again, as I was saying before, with like trash piles and whatever else you want to use it for, it's, uh, it's pretty good. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.